At 1 p.m. HST, I know where I will be. Ukulele Underground Podcast for you and me. Aldrin and Erin and Kahai. And maybe Magic Mike or a guest on the fly. Ukulele Underground Podcast. Now here's the guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ukulele on the Ground podcast. My name is Aldrin Guerrero. Joining me are Mr. Aaron, the voice, now Kamura, all the way over there. What's up? Oh, uh, yes, yeah, what's up? <laughs> 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 Mr. Kahai, the legend, Ferguson. What's up, Kahai? What's up? And Mr. Magic. Mike Odo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Funk Master, hey, Mad. Funk Magic Mike Odo is back. <laughs> like he promised. He said, he, last time he was here, he promised, I will be here to to uh to to do songs. to do the songs with you guys the solidarity we're all going to write a song right i said maybe <laughs> i'd write a song i didn't guarantee that he is I said here I'd to come back. he is here to hear everybody else's <laughs> song <laughs> because today our um our songwriting challenge is due so but before we get to that i don't want to jump the gun um what we do here at the ukulele on the ground podcast is we answer any and all of your questions we are live so this is being streamed uh, to, to YouTube or wherever wherever you're watching us from. This might be like a uh, replay or whatever. But uh, if you're watching live, you can ask us questions about the ukulele, about music, whatever you want. Um, as long as you understand that we give opinions and not answers. So if you have cues, we have O's for your cues. All right. We try. Well, I mean, usually we come up with a pretty good, like yeah. what you would consider an answer. But I don't want to call them answers before we're wrong. You know, it's like, <laughs> well, that was his opinion. It's like, what's well, a wrong one? It's like, well, it is. His opinion, <laughs> his wrong opinion, but <laughs> I, it's not gospel. That's all we're trying to say yes. here, right? Not gospel. The uh, what what we say <clears throat> here on this podcast, it's just based off of our own experiences or just from what we remember. Correct? You know, like mass mm-hmm. uh, mass. Ma- <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike. Ma- I want to say magic so bad. <laughs> Funk master, Funk magic. Mike over here has been teaching. Uh, has been teaching music for what a couple decades almost a couple decades now you know a little more than a couple decades and uh and for myself i've been teaching ukulele for almost a couple decades uh, alongside mr aaron the voice now comer over here and kahai the legend is just that a legend around these parts so you know just just feel feel comfortable to know that your uh, question will be answered by at least four people who have who have gone through something similar Yes. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> People who have picked up instruments. Yeah. Not recently. <laughs> so without further ado, uh, let's answer some questions. Do we have any questions beforehand, gentlemen? Uh, yeah. Our starting question for you guys. Yes. Oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, so we were thinking. Um, uh, shoot, I forgot how we were gonna word it. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think is the most overlooked or like some of the most overlooked skills and techniques that not only ukulele players overlook but musicians and especially beginner musicians yeah like when they're first starting out oh what what's, are things what's something that would actually help you on your musical journey mm-hmm. that some people overlook at the very beginning oh easy um number one form <laughs> form <laughs> Just right off the bat, if you're holding it wrong, you're probably gonna play it wrong, right? Yep. Right, Mike? Yes. Like, that goes for it. That goes for anything. It's not even just ukulele. Like, imagine, you know, because flutes are supposed to be held a certain way. Right. Imagine if you played flute this way. Like, this is not gonna happen, right? <laughs> or a violin. You're supposed to hold it a certain way. Right. If you don't do that, not gonna happen. French horn. If your hands not in there, yeah, mm, you know, sounds weird. Yeah, it sounds it sounds weird. Yeah. That's just. Just flat out form. I for me is like the number one thing, and and it's often overlooked. But because uh, people just want to, you know, and I don't blame people because that's that's how I did it. Like you just want to jump in and start playing songs, mm-hmm. start playing chords, start playing melodies and stuff already. So you're just like, okay, well, what is the chords for the song that I want to play? I'm just gonna make however I can to make noise with my instrument with those chords that like the internet is telling me. So you just go ahead and go do it, not thinking about like, you know, form, because if you think about form, you at least know that you're doing correct because even you know, even though if you have the wrong form, even though you're playing the song and the stuff, you're basically just um, 
you're 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 just making it to play that song instead of like thinking about okay I can play this song and these other songs like uh, because I, I'm I'm playing correctly it should uh, it should land everything should be comfortable um, that technique should be happening you know and and I can do all these things that I want to do within the song all right uh, number two is phrasing any instrument like I can tell between somebody who just learned their instruments <laughs> and uh, somebody who's been playing their instrument for a long time it, it, it's just how they phrase you know and uh, and sometimes people who've been playing for a long time have been phrasing wrong for a long time yep. you can tell you can tell who like <clears throat> the people who have the feel people who don't have the feel you know and it's it's fine if you don't but that is definitely a skill that you can you know that you can develop and a lot of people overlook that um number Wait, what, uh, what, like could you explain like what you really mean oh, by phrasing phrasing is just like um the way that you play the notes how long you're holding each note for and uh and the feel and groove of uh, of each phrase or line so for example those are two phrases right right is one phrase that's the second phrase that's another phrase that's four phrases in that like in that whole solo so if you were to play it correctly it'd be but if you're not phrasing the song it'd be It just doesn't have the dynamics. It doesn't have the uh, like holding it for its full value. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the uh, almost like a slur like, you know, just kind of flowing from one note to the other groove that it should have. Right. Um, and like it just the sounds notes are correct. Yeah, the notes are You're correct. They're correct notes. <laughs> but it's it's kind of like if you talk like this without having any kind of you know cadence. inflection or anything or cadence you yeah, know like yeah. you're saying the right things right but it doesn't sound like a conversation you it's know? also like, harder yeah. to understand yes if someone were to just yes. go like this the whole time and never stop and they keep going like that then they don't actually understand what they're saying mm -hmm. it's yeah. the same thing if yeah. you play like that yeah. yeah but you're you're saying the right words you know i, I mean kind of like words. you would be saying the right or you'd be playing the right notes but it wouldn't necessarily be musical yeah you know? no. i think and i think it's like the same thing too yeah. with the example that mike just gave it's like you can understand it mm -hmm. and but you have to put in more effort to understand yeah. it as and, an audience member yeah or yeah that and it feels weird yeah and it's not enjoyable right yeah. to just like listen yeah. to somebody talk like that it's right. like oh okay like i understand what you're saying but mm -hmm. it's not like a, yeah so i mean that in itself has has groove in there i mean if you don't have groove it's not going to be phrased correctly that's dynamics that's like attack on the strings mm -hmm. all that stuff it's it's rolled up into one which is phrasing and last but not least for me number three is the ability to be able to play with somebody or to play along with something you know like mm -hmm. follow a rhythm or follow a person or uh play in in some kind of ensemble where like you or and another ukulele player or you as a guitar player with another ukulele, uh, with a ukulele player bass for whatever but playing with others is definitely a skill that a lot of people overlook a lot of people just play by themselves and they're like they're really good but once like they they meet up it, it, you can tell that like that person doesn't play uh, that that absolutely that much with other and, people. Or, and you see that a lot. Yeah. You see that a lot in open mics. Yes, yes, yes. Where someone will come and just play solos over mm -hmm. the top of everybody else <laughs> yeah. because yeah, that's. Because yeah. they've never been taught, hey, uh, yeah. you should probably leave space yeah, for everybody should, else. You should probably let that guy sing the song. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> yeah. But that, for me, top three things. How about you, Mike? Number one would be form as well. Yeah. And, the, you know, one thing other that also good form is going to help is your longevity as a player. Yes. I think yes, anybody yes. who wants to pick up an instrument, you hope that you will be playing it. I mean, I hope that you will play it. For your whole want life, <laughs> yeah. you, you want to play for your whole life. <laughs> and as anybody who, all, all four of us in here mm -hmm. who have played for a long time will tell you, your hands, your wrists, your back, your neck, all that stuff mm -hmm. like that, man, that, yeah. it, it can wear out on you. Yeah. And, and you went through that. Yes, yes, you yes. Know? 
you and there's just, not just like one correct form. I mean, there's many, you know, right, like many ways form things. is. Yeah. It's not like and there are different. Right. People have different body yes, shapes. And yes. Types, yes. So. so it's not one like master form that you got, you know, that right. you got to have. But figuring out a way to hold and approach your instrument in a way that you can play it uh, proficiently, right. or efficiently, and, and not and, stressing yeah. your body while you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You know, That's it. with, That's with ukulele, like the yeah. one I always point out is, don't make your wrist do this or this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As if you, much if as you do this or this. That's putting a lot of stress on that yes. carpal tunnel mm. for no real reason because you can obviously move the ukulele around in a way yeah. that doesn't do that. Yeah. So uh, number two, and it's interesting actually because I think it, uh, I think the things we think about mm. as what people are missing or mm. skills kind of show what era we grew up in <laughs> okay because mm -hmm. my second one is listening <laughs> which kind of has to do with yeah, your yeah, third yeah, like playing along listening yeah. back in the day our educational materials for i mean especially ukulele like when i grew up mm. the 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 limit of ukulele education was the Kapuna who comes in your class once a week with the box of ukuleles <laughs> yeah. and says, okay, children, we're gonna play this one song yeah. and you were gonna learn like Beautiful Kawaii or Helion to Kawaii. And that was or something. That was like it. And she yeah, wasn't yeah. gonna like, you know, those aunties, they didn't really yeah. teach you like good form or anything like that. It was like, okay, yeah. and here's the chart. I gotta get through this hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was like, and, and it, you know, you yeah. can't really blame them. They, you know, they weren't like trained teachers of that. They were mm -hmm. like just lifelong yeah. players who were going to share, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, information and wisdom with you. But you had to learn to listen to all those things. You had to learn to listen to play with other people. Now it's harder because you, like uh, the other part of listening is like a lot of us learn stuff by ear. Mm -hmm. You have to learn things by ear. Yep. Yeah. What that does is it trains your ear to hear things so that if you ever wondered why somebody that you know who's a good musician, like you play a song from like two, three times and they already have like the structure, the kind of, mm -hmm. maybe they'll miss a chord here too, but realistically, they'll probably get like 80% of the song after one or two playthrough and then they can just do it. Mm -hmm. That's because they listen. Yeah, They really listen. And because they've listened to so much other music over, you know, their entire life, mm -hmm. they hear those similar structures and they hear those, you know, unifying threads that go through music. And we, as we've talked here before, like yeah. you hear this chord progression, the two, five, one progression or one, four, five, mm -hmm. you hear that and it's like, oh, well, it's just that. So, okay, what key are we in? Okay, I can combine those two things and I can mm -hmm. play the song pretty much. Now in the era of digital, skip, 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 skip. Yeah. I'm listening to a song, skip, 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 skip. It's, you know, in even, yeah. in even uh, for everybody who, you know, goes online. And I think it's funny that a lot of people will go online and they'll look up a chord chart to a song and they'll kind of listen to the song, but they'll really just look at the chord mm -hmm. chart. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or they follow tab. Or tab. Yeah, tab. And that's where you can tell that they, they didn't learn phrasing from listening yeah. to the song. Yeah because they just play the notes straight, right? Like they right. play it like and dot, they just, dot, dot, they, dot, they just dot. barrel through it. Yeah. Yeah, my yeah. first exposure was like, uh, you remember when like While My Guitar Gently Weeps was like the song to play? I think it still is in kind of, you know, some ways, but when people were learning While My Guitar Gently Weeps, like Dominator had a tab out there. Dom shout out to Dominator. If you guys haven't checked out Dominator's tab, I think it's still up. You can, you can uh, still get, he's not. Uh, I think somebody else oh, took over. Oh, I see, site. I see, I see, yeah, I see. For the site. Okay, well, you know, like the, the the tabs are available somewhere. If you if you look for it, I'm sure you find it. But um, I you know it, you I would look for. Um, like ukulele content back in you know back in those days ukulele content was pretty scarce like you couldn't find much ukulele content so i would see all these people doing covers of wama guitar gently weeps and it's obvious that like they got the tab and they're trying to follow the tab and stuff but there's just no phrase to it or no yeah. you know like no not really listening to say like the uh the, the jake version i know we none of us can play exactly like jake but you kind of want to at least like have the you know when you're playing it have it sound like while wow, my guitar or like this well, I mean, the, the beetle yeah version, but you know, the tab they, they were looking it. at was yeah. his version yeah so it only makes sense that if you get the tab for it 
and just, you, not, yeah, you should probably listen to the guy <laughs> and the actual recording that the yeah. tab was taken from. Yeah, but to be fair, I'm sure people are like, yeah, I did. I listened to it. It sounds just like it. And that's that's just a, a fact that like you haven't really developed that ear I, as, as you mm-hmm. should. You yeah. Know? I think what like how I explain it is yeah. like there's a difference between listening and active listening. And like you're taking apart the song, like you're deconstructing the song mm-hmm. in your head. Mm-hmm. Rather than like, oh, I'm listening to a song and I'm just enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, right? like I heard it. Yeah. 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 That's why like everybody listens to <laughs> songs, right? And then you go like, oh, what is the second verse of the song? And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I only know the chorus, right? I only know mm-hmm. the hooks or whatever. It's because right. like they don't actively yeah. Yeah. listen to the song. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's oh, um, well, the third one. Third. Or Number, if you have a third one. Uh, yeah, so it was form. And then listening, yeah. listening and is good. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna that's really that. important. Yeah. That encapsulates a lot. I yeah. Think. yeah, yeah. And I think it's something that people do now that they they didn't necessarily do then. Mm. Slow down. So <laughs> slow down mm. in every sense of the word. Yeah. If you're trying to figure out a piece of music that's really hard, yeah. slow down. If you try and le- if you try to learn Toccata at full speed from never having heard it before, mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to do it. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. It that's pretty difficult. Iron sharpens iron, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but the iron has to be smelted and forged first before that. Nice, nice. And if you and if you skimp on that part, the sword breaks. <laughs> so, but also, in your journey, slow down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are all here we as educators we are all for setting goals Mm -hmm. but if you set a goal and then step on the gas to get there Mm -hmm. you will probably take shortcuts ones that will which go back to the other two you will skimp on your listening you will skimp on your form you will skimp on your ability to play with other people all that stuff like that (laughs) and then when you get to that goal so like if the goal was to play while my guitar gently weeps yes and you just take every shortcut you can to get there. It's just to get the notes. Cool, maybe you'll have the notes, but then you'll do, what will you be missing? You'll be missing the phrasing, you'll be missing the, the, the all that stuff that Jake throws into it, or, or any good player who plays the song. Mm-hmm. Anybody who can play the song well, they have that, and then part of make, growing as a musician is taking it and making it yours. I've heard you play While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're using his framework, mm-hmm. but you make it your own. You do your own things with it. Yeah. Because that's because I'm, sh- I'm no Jake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta yeah. make it work somehow, man. I don't even think of it like that. It's like you could be yeah. the 35th imitator of Jake, or you could be the first Eldrin. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know? And, yeah. and, and on your journey, when you're beginning, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of imitation. Mm-hmm. We all do it. But eventually, your goal is to be the first real mm-hmm. you. Yeah, you know. So that would be the, that would be the other thing. Slow down, enjoy the enjoy the journey to get to That's your true. goals. You know. I I gotta listen to that advice. This uh, all of last week, I was trying to figure out that um, the Stevie Wonder song. Yes. What is, what is Sir, that Duke. Sir Duke? Sir Duke. It's trying to figure out Sir Duke, and I was watching um, uh, Herb Alter Jr.'s version of it uh, on on High Sessions. And I was like trying to play along, and like, and I know it. I've heard the song like a million times. I'm just like, huh, why am I not getting it? Like, I didn't slow it down. You know, I'm just like, ah. And I get to that part because I can play everything else, and I get to the last phrase, and I can't figure out the last phrase. I'm like, what is that last phrase? And then, I mean, I would just make the mistake of like rewinding it back to the beginning of that, you know, of that breakdown of trying to play it, and then like, and then once I get to that part, and I just fumble, and I'm like, ah. But I don't just go to that part and just slow down uh-huh. and listen to it. No. Nope, I'm like, no, I'm all Dream Guerrero. I should be able to figure this out. <laughs> nope, nope. Got to listen to Mike's advice. And you know what I did? Called the lifeline. <laughs> I called Brittany Pye. I'm like, Brittany, you play this song, right? How do you do this? <laughs> see? And, and she slowed it down and for And she you. slowed it down for me. So that's, that's see? The, the lesson here is is have good friends. <laughs> that helps as well. That, <laughs> That'll do that it for you. Well. Shout out to Brittany Pye. But thank you for teaching me, Sir Duke. Yeah. <laughs> that is that last phrase of it. I would say too, uh, something that I was thinking about, it ties into mm-hmm. listening that Mike mentioned. Mm-hmm. I think people don't tune by ear anymore. And mm-hmm. I think that uh, while it's not like a necessary skill, uh, like it's so easy to buy a tuner now and people just get mm-hmm. free tuners on their phones and everything. And yeah, I definitely use that. But learning to tune by ear, I think really helped me with like pitch 
mm-hmm. uh, like knowing pitches and knowing Absolutely. relative pitch mm-hmm. and understanding that. And that's just like from practice. And it was mm-hmm. like I was forced because I think I had a tuner, but you you know you leave your tuner somewhere. It's like mm-hmm. well, I know my G string is in tune, so I can tune the rest of my ukulele. Yeah. Yeah. Or you know like if you when you were doing it like in the band room or something like that. Tell the xylophone player or the piano player, uh, hit an E, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And it starts with that. It starts with like matching the pitch yeah. and they'll play all the four, all six mm-hmm. notes. And then eventually if you get the first one, then you should that's, be able to hear where the next one goes. That's what I used to do. Cause I used to play, uh, I used to play with my dad. My dad would play guitar and I would just be like, oh, can you give me a G? Like the G string of the guitar. Cause with, with my ukulele, the top string is G. So mm-hmm. just relative to the guitar, uh, I'll hear it. And as soon as I hear that, then I can tune the rest of my ukulele. Right. But I've done it so much now that whenever I hear a G notes, I have like relative pitch. <laughs> and that, that's what developed my relative pitch. And I'll hear it, I'm like, that's a G. <laughs> I, I know it and like even without hearing the um, you know um, the reference I can just be like mm, hum it out yeah. and then there it is you know like and then just tune my ukulele from there because I heard the note G so much times <laughs> yeah or even like uh, I think people who use a tuner mm. like what they might not have to is like when they play their ukulele they just strum through their strings like uh, I know for us like when we do lessons with people and then they're playing like it's pretty quick that me and you like if we're doing a lesson with them right like uh, on zoom we'll be like oh your e string is probably out of tune like we can hear it in the core yeah, that it's yeah, out of tune yeah. so it's like a, <laughs> it seems like magic like whenever we tell people that they're like how'd you know it's like how'd you know that string. specific it, string? It, it, like so, you i've heard, heard that string oh, i've heard that day. chord yeah i've yeah. heard that chord play that same exact way i know which one you well, know <laughs> and even like you can there's like little tricks too right where it's like oh your a string is out of tune because every time you hold down the c i can hear that it doesn't yeah. match the rest of the notes yeah mm-hmm. so there's it, it's like a uh, I, it's so easy to use a tuner, but I think it is worth it if you can kind of build that skill set. It'll, it'll just make you like a better musician to play with other people or to hear if your ukulele is in tune even. Yeah. yeah. Nice. So that's that's our that's our three. Any uh, we'll we'll answer some quick questions and we'll yeah. go to the songwriting challenge. Um, before I, f- I forget, I always like I always get nervous. Even even if I have like the, even if I wrote the song and stuff and I've been practicing it all week, as soon as like I'm about to present it, I'm like, how does it go? And I have to like, <laughs> listen to the recording again. It's That's like, same. oh my god. So it's like let's, let's answer a couple questions while I still kind of got it in my mind. <laughs> I was practicing it all morning. All right. Question, Kai. Uh, okay, uh, Joshua said, uh, "Have you ever played a more better ukulele?" Yeah, I played tons. Um, I played. Uh, I played one that you know that that Chuck Moore just was carrying around in one of like the ukulele festivals. I played Suki's one, which is a flamingo one. I played. Um, I played Matt's one. I played yeah. tons of them. They're they're great. I mean, they're and built they're really well. Huh? Yeah, and I mean, like it's just one guy making them, like making one a year or whatever, you know. <laughs> so like the the amount of um, attention to detail that that he uh, that he puts in there is is really really good, and he's like a master at inlay like really 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 good chuck moore is is a talent in inlay work especially but his his uke sound you know his uke sound pretty good um let's see yeah, oh, yeah. it's rob yeah. in the chat said yeah, oh yeah rob's his. yeah rob's <laughs> one yeah. yeah so i've uh i've played i've played tons i like them you know but it's it's a hefty price point though if, if you have the money for it it's one of those like um it'll always have good value you know, like even if you don't like the ukulele or whatever, if 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 you got one built and didn't like it, I'm pretty sure like the, the that, yeah the the, uh, the wait list for for somebody wanting to buy that instrument off of you is uh, yeah. So <laughs> since the, the last time I was here, we were talking about ukulele yeah. prices. Yeah. About how much do they cost? Ooh, because like I don't. Because I don't. Ten grand plus, buddy. We're talking ten grand plus. For real? Yeah, it's like Chuck Moore and Divine. You know, like you could, like those are the names that like fetch for. Yeah. Like over yeah. ten grand. Yeah. yeah, and then Chuck is famous for his inlay work. So yeah. It's not like it basically isn't gonna come up, come without an inlay. Yeah. Mm. Like, and you specify basically yeah. what right. you want. So. Right, and yeah, it also depends, you know, like how intricate the stuff is. It could be yeah. less than ten grand, but for the most part, like if you know, if you're gonna get one made you're by Chuck, like you wanna like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you wanna, you might as well like, you don't want go, the stock. Yeah. 
bottle <laughs> yeah. of Chuck Moore. So you want like whatever it's, you're uh, like. It is it is pretty pricey. They're they're great. I mean, you know, they're they're equal at, at that price point. I think yeah. like they all kind of have like a similar you know quality to it, and um and similar build. You know, they're not all perfect. I'll tell you guys that much. It's not like you know because they're at that price point. Like every single one that I've played was just like. You know, for lack of a better term, divine. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it, it's it's not perfect. It's it's just like one dude like making them, but they yeah. do look great. And uh, the ones that I played have you know have sounded pretty good. And uh, yeah, I mean that's just my unfiltered like honest yeah. opinion. Oh, Bottom, they're, they're uh, Rob, Rob yeah. in the chat said, um, I guess a simpler inlay can be around five k. Yeah. yeah I'm I yeah, mean, that's, that's, still 5K. Yeah, that's, that's still five k. That's still five thousand dollars. And, and, and you said, know, yeah. I mean, I'm not one to say that it. You know, I just don't know because I've definitely heard of that brand. Yeah, I've just I've never More seen bad. one in person. At least I don't mm. think so. When Rob was here the last time, maybe that was, but I don't think it mm. was. Well, like, like I said, if you're an ukulele collector, I mean, that's the kind of people who would buy those ukuleles anyway. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're gonna shell out like five. The 10, plus, 000. yeah, uh, uh, you know, on yeah. an ukulele, then like, then they're, you know, um, that you would have to be like a big fan of, uh, of ukuleles in general, or like, or a collector collecting right. like rare ones, and that's definitely a rare one, you know, right. he because that's it's one guy, maybe he makes one to a year or something. Like, yeah. I, I don't know exactly, but I it can't be more than that, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, and I, you know, in every in every realm. Mm -hmm there's definitely instrument makers that are in that range and it's yeah. it's like you're you're paying you're paying for that too yeah. you know you 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 know craftsmanship like, there's in martin the, in the work yeah, martin yeah. guitars that are i remember when i was working at a martin dealer and i would see like d45s or d100 like the d100 which is basically their most blingy dreadnought guitar they made the yeah. list price was a hundred thousand dollars wow and no, i was just yeah. like yeah what are you getting for a hundred at that point it's like this is the only one that has this feature or that feature yeah or it's made by this person yeah. or whatever yeah. you know like, like um clout at that point yeah. <laughs> one of my one of my best friends i've mentioned yeah. was a uh dancing angelo he's a incredible bass player oh from Utah. I saw that name he dropped just now yeah, yeah he dropped, he dropped him. thank you <laughs> <laughs> for the eight people who would know who he is <laughs> He's having uh, he he's he has it on his Instagram that in the next few in the next couple of weeks yeah. he's having his next custom Fodera bass Oof. delivered. Yeah, and Fodera's for anybody who do not That's know the one with like the the like, butter it's the one with the butterfly yeah, on yeah, the head. Yeah, yeah. The one Victor Wooten plays. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and this is going to be like his sixth, seventh <laughs> custom <laughs> Fodera. Mm -hmm. and they they're they're going to start at like eight nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars. <laughs> And 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 for most of them go way beyond that yeah. one. Like his Fifth first grand. his first yeah. his first Federa that I ever saw was um mm -hmm. this beautiful custom six string he had made and just as a joke he sent me the bill yeah to so I could see it and it was like twelve thousand bucks. Mm -hmm. So now we hear, you know, six bases later, I'm like, All right, yeah. dude. <laughs> you this, know this right here, hundred thousand dollars. According to, uh, <laughs> think now. It's uh, I got it. I sent it to be, uh, you know, to to have it worked on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got I got the um, you know I got the ukulele back. And inside was like a little note from Kanilea of like about my instrument. And it's like oh, hundred thousand dollars. But it was it was a joke. But like, <laughs> Kaimana just wrote it out as like a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> like, and then they, they put like zero for artists. So I'm like oh yeah, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> So nice. But I kept did, it. I kept the paper. Did they I'm like, it for that much? I don't for think the, so. I think it's just. <laughs> I think they just put that, slip that paper in there, and just made up a price for uh -huh. it. And stuff. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. I, <laughs> talking about custom yeah. instruments, I always think it's funny. Or like, I would love to, as a joke, I would love to like mm -hmm. go to Chuck Moore and be like, "Yeah, I love your ukuleles." Can you make me one out of laminate <laughs> with no inlay, right? I'm sure you have some laying around, right, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I could the finest laminate. <laughs> I could, I could mahogany. Possibly, could I do my own cuts of wood, right, from a home <laughs> depot? <laughs> Ikea, Ikea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful pine laminate. <laughs> it's like uh, the the IKEA furniture yeah. where it's like you can see the sawdust coming off from the side. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a Hawaiian brand called IKEA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> IKEA. <Yeah. laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, hopefully that answers that. Let's let's go. Let's let's do our uh, our song. So Kahai, remind us again. What is the songwriting challenge? Uh, so uh, just in general, or what is yeah, the actual yeah, what challenge? Is, what is the uh, in general? Like just for people who are tuning in for the first time, they're like, what is what are they talking about? Yeah, we uh, challenge ourselves to write mm-hmm. songs. And we asked the audience for suggestions for guidelines to yeah. what we should write. Uh, and we usually throw in our own guidelines or just stuff for fun. Uh, and then in a couple weeks, we come back with our songs. We play it for everybody. But then we also open up to the audience. And if you send in your own song, uh, we'll put your name in a random drawing mm-hmm. and then send you something like a snack oh, or nice. something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Somebody so- was like, Oh, I can make you guys those uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the circle of fifths, yeah. like stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was like, no, 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 we're, nice. we're just joking. Thank, thank nice. you for the offer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're just super joking. nice. <laughs> okay, so what were the um, the parameters for this specific challenge, Kai? The only uh, set guideline mm-hmm. was that uh, you had to use a chord cousin. Mm-hmm. So it's like a chord that's either out of the key or a chord that uses a note that's mm-hmm. not necessarily mm-hmm. in the key or yeah. not necessarily yeah. with oh, was the, that what it was <laughs> yeah i yeah, thought it was the after thing <laughs> no i mean that was like yeah, yeah that was like or something yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but i think our only guideline was you have to have a chord cousin remember like from the chord family like yes. chord cousin and stuff mm-hmm. okay so um i usually go first let me uh, i i wrote an instrumental song that i hope i can remember how to play it's a, i this one kind of came fast like he always it, remembers it, uh, it, it came kind of fast to me and i was inspired by i wanted to i knew i wanted to write a song that had um the royal road progression and uh and the, what the royal road progression is it's basically um f g or like it's just four so mm-hmm. in this case f in, in the in the key of c F major uh, four major seven, G seven, and it goes to a um, E minor, and it goes to A minor. So it's that four, five, and I believe three six mm-hmm. four five three six the roll roll progression. Um, I I'm not like an expert on it or anything like, but from what uh, from what I remember, just um, that, that it's basically a, a, an, an easy roll. Like it's just you know like. That four or five, E minor A. The roll it's just paved, you know, just paid for you. Mm-hmm. It's raw road, nice and nice, nice and simple. Um, for for those of you folks unfamiliar, it's like never gonna give you never gonna get that's the never first gonna thing that I, I thought of. Yeah, that's that's basically what it is. But like a lot of like Japanese anime and stuff like that, <laughs> it has has that song. And I didn't realize that um, I used it for a. Um, uh, and it fits the whole royal road thing. Uh, I, I did a song called El Baesa, which is like the hero's welcome back to his, uh, you know, to his, uh, to his village or his his home and stuff. So I had that. Yeah. Uh, the. So I, I did that before, and I'm like, okay, cool. And uh, and I I am inspired. So since it's a Japanese kind of you know like um, uh, <laughs> chord progression, I was thinking about Fulati Pad. So I wanted to make a song that Fulati Pad would play. So here what? we go. Huh? Uh, I'll ask you after. All right. Okay. I don't know what the song is called. Um, it's called. Uh, let's just call it. F- f- Fua fua pad. <laughs> <laughs> fua fua like fluffy pad. <laughs> okay, it goes.
point ya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 like a full album like song, yeah. That, yeah. that would be on one of their albums. So actually, I I have to say, I'm not super familiar with their music, but the one thing I have heard of them <laughs> yeah. that totally stylistically, yeah. the, only, the only thing I've ever heard of that yeah. band is the like the three second clip you guys used in ukulele charades. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, and there was something about the lick you played that had like that same <laughs> yeah, vibe. Yeah, the vibe. Yeah, well, I, I wanted Listening. to, um, so the, the Royal Road progression comes in, in the chorus, which is the uh, that big stretch that it has. So I had this F, so it's, remember it's F, G, E minor, A minor. So it'd be uh, that F, and then G, and then E minor. So the that's kind of what I came up with first, and I was thinking of like uh, the the Royal Road, you know, like there's this like this kind of like the this this I I have, I have that this vision of the road going, and then you're like as you're getting closer to your goal kind of thing. So like the goal is kind of far, then it gets closer and gets closer, mm-hmm. and then it mm-hmm. kind of comes together. Yeah. So that's kind of a. I wanted to end it like on a minor in the, on the uh, first one, uh-huh. and then. And back to the C. So it's like a nice and easy royal road home. Fua off, fua off, pad. <laughs> <laughs> and then what was the, the chord that was. Oh, the sorry. Um, so there's a part that goes. Mm-hmm. So it's like a E7. Which is usually uh, E minor in the uh, in yeah. in mm-hmm. the chord family, and then I did um, D. So it's a major major two, and I did a major three. So um, yeah, major mm-hmm. one, two, and three. <laughs> no minors here. All all easy roll road. All legal. <laughs> but yeah, um, if you guys are interested in it, ch- check it out. I'm not like an expert at it but i just like that chord progression that sound and <laughs> wrote, i wrote to it so yeah there's a joke in like with japanese music or a meme yeah. where it's like me and my homies dancing to a japanese song <laughs> when it's about depression because <laughs> yeah. it's like so boxy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like oh this is actually the saddest song ever. <laughs> I was gonna ask too. Did yeah. you write that before or after you went to the bone dance? Oh, hmm. Well, there wasn't a bone dance, but there was like a matsuri, I guess. Oh, yeah, okay. maybe you're right. Like, I, maybe that's how I was thinking Japanese yeah, yeah, music because yeah. I just came on the matsuri last weekend, yeah. which is when I wrote it. So, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess I was picking up like the uh, yeah, 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 listening. Yeah. <laughs> but it it came kind of fast. Like as soon as I got that, you know. As soon as I got that part, I'm like, oh yeah, full out of pad. Easy, easy. Very much like them. Okay. This, this song is about depression and working in the rice fields, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, this is my song.
In the beginning, I was expecting like drums of liberation from, <laughs> from you guys. Uh-huh. Hot dang, that was really good. That was really good. And love the the moment that the like the chord cousin came in. I was like, Ooh, that's the one. Explain. Well, like I, I try to. One of the mm. other uh, mm. guidelines or like bonuses for the challenge mm. was like write an E, mm-hmm. and I, I was like, oh, okay, I can do that. Like, cause I'm not gonna sing this song, so I'll just like write mm. in whatever key I want. And I, what I did to pick out chords at first was I just went online and I did, I rolled dice. And then, so I think I rolled a uh, five, five, two, one or something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> and then, so I, it's like B, B, uh, G sharp minor. So that's a three. And then mm-hmm. E, that's the chords mm-hmm. at the beginning. Uh, and then, so I, I plugged it in and I was like doing, adding more stuff to it. And then I, like halfway through writing the song, I realized the song is in B. It's not in E. I was like, oh, dang There's it. There's an E in it. Yeah. It, it like, oh, the B is like so yeah. prominent. And then like I was trying to write melodies in E and I was doing stuff. And then when I just like played B over it, I was like, yeah, this is definitely. Oh. Uh, I mean, that's right. Because it goes like, I guess, one, one, and six, yeah. four, I guess. So like the very, like mm. the part that it switches, mm. it actually switches to C. Like it just switches mm. the whole key. Nice. Uh, yeah. But like the chord cousin in it is that to get to that switch, I yeah. do uh, A7 and then to an E minor. So like really quick, just like that. And then in the actual switch to C, uh, you gave that example of like playing the C chord and then just like changing the G note, right? Like mm-hmm. adding notes to it, mm-hmm. and I kind of did the same thing where like the bass note is just like ascending or descending chromatically. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of like also yeah. chord cousin. Too. Yeah. I like the um, I, I don't know if it was like a cello or like uh, like a double bass like <laughs> that, but with with the bow, like oh, mm-hmm. and like that gave a nice little like. <laughs> I tried to do like uh, my idea mm-hmm. too with this was like to kind of play with like the spacing of the song. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start off with like that really low bass note, mm-hmm. and my speaker did okay. But like, uh, if you listen to it in headphones, it's like a sub mm-hmm. bass, and it's just like really low. Yeah. Uh, but then also have that those like really high notes with mm-hmm. like uh, more synthesizer kind of sounding, mm-hmm. well, and then violin on the highs too, and double bass. What what kind of headphones would you recommend to people, Kai? <laughs> Uh, the headphones that I use, I wouldn't if price reckon. was no object, price is no object. Hi. Which headphone would you suggest for I people mean, to get to listen to this song in particular? Yeah. It's in the Chuck Moore territory. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, if price is no no object, yeah. or like you know, you don't have to worry about price. Yeah. You wish it was in the Chuck Moore territory. Oh right? yeah. snap! Because there's yeah, there's like the Sennheiser HE1, uh-huh. and I think that. Goes for like maybe sixty thousand. Uh, so like the the Ooh. custom Martin territory. Yeah, yeah. yeah I see, I see, I see. Yeah. We're gonna get into custom car territory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you've been in a, a big recording studio before. Yeah. And those Apex, studio, and yeah. those studio speakers. Yeah. Now that's when. You I want to just... steal everything from that studio. Like I just, <laughs> you know, what I mean, like I I got I got an invite inside from Jake and like. I think I joked around like would uh, with him. I'm like, would people notice if I put stuff in my pocket? <laughs> like, 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 don't do that. Don't even, joke about that. <laughs> don't even joke about that. I'm Somebody like, will tackle just you. Just kidding. You know, he's like, yeah, that microphone is like Barbara Streisand used it. It was like fifty grand or yeah, sixty yeah. grand or yeah, whatever. Like, it's also forty years old. Yeah, yeah. Like, for <laughs> so, real. Uh, Hot dang. <laughs> Yeah, last time when I see stuff like that, and yeah. so like Genelec, mm-hmm. you know these monitor speakers, just like absolutely perfect. You can hear like pin <laughs> drops. It's like, oh, these are amazing. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're only you know like two hundred thousand dollars for the pair. It's like, oh, damn. jeez, you know, you know. What what's if you could go to any studio in the world, which one would you go, would you go to? Any studio? Ooh, any studio. I mean, probably Abbey Road. That's a good one. Electric Ladyland for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Electric Ladyland. And Abbey Road is a close second, very close <laughs> second. But electrically, land. It's like I just, you know, I just want to make noise in that place. <laughs> All right. Oh, good job, guys. Be a second, a good second one. 
the original Motown studio. Oh, okay, yeah. In, in, yeah, yeah. In, in, house? The, in Barry Gordy's house. <laughs> yeah, Barry Gordy. Yeah. Hey, Kai, good job. Man. What do you call that? Uh, I kind of, I named mm. it uh, Sweet Pop in mm. my project file. And kind of like the idea too that I got from it, or like who I was taking it from is a composer, mm. I forget his name. But he composed for uh, an anime movie called Words Bu Bubble Up Like Soda Pop. So mm. I was like thinking that. Oh, okay, that's okay, okay. Nice. Yeah. Hey. Right on, man. Okay, all right. Or Mike, do you want to go? <laughs> 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 okay, so yeah, um, so, yeah what, one of the bonuses was Goldfish. Mm -hmm. And so like I, I started writing a song. I really wanted to write a song about like goldfish crackers no oh, okay you know <laughs> and I was, so i was trying to figure out how no. i could do that like maybe like a song about like being a kid and like opening your lunch box and like that's like your favorite thing but mm -hmm. it just wasn't coming out so um so this song is like sort of from the perspective mm -hmm. of a goldfish but um it up <laughs> applies to everyone like, you know, it's, a, it, it's a metaphor <laughs> so yeah so it like to swim in the ocean i don't know but i got a voice that tells me what oh, but i got a voice that tells me what it would be wonderful if i could find my way out of this hole okay let me try that one more time <laughs> <laughs> one, one, two, three. Like to swim in the ocean, I don't know. But I got a voice that tells me it would be wonderful if I could find my way out of this boat. <laughs> I wanna ride up to the filter and open overflow into a world where anything could be possible. Reverse my bubble, saying you'll never go. Cause everybody's singing, that's it. That's all. This life is just about the colored gravel. The more you get, you know, the more you got. Don't quit it all. Be content with your plastic castle. They say it's everything, you know, it's not. could never figure it out what's so valuable about a treasure chest that can't even lock up gold the bubbles open for all to see same as for the millions of people who never know just how the purpose of their lives can be malleable it could be anything you wish it would be but everybody's singing that's it that's all this life is just about the colored gravel the more you get you know the more you got don't quit it all be content with your plastic castle they say it's everything you know it's not After a lifetime of ignoring Finally listen to the song Your heart is singing Don't let it all Be a life of chasing colored gravel The time you get is all the time you got Don't fall, this life is more than just a plastic castle. You could be everything you know you're not. Mm -hmm. 
So, <laughs> what's it like to swim in the ocean? I don't know, but I got a voice that tells me it would be wonderful if I could find my way out of this boat. Yeah. So unpack that for us, Aaron. <laughs> so, yeah. so um, that the first suggestion yeah. that we got was F diminished. Yeah. And so you like, got a second so chord. I chose the key of uh, G flat mm -hmm. because it has that F diminished yeah. in it. That's part of the the key chord family. Yeah. 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 But then I used um, what did a is like a. Uh, minor four. Yeah. yeah, minor four. I yeah. also used the minor five. Yeah, during the um, and then during the bridge. Yeah, during the bridge. The, yeah, the second and then part of the bridge. Like, e, which is so good. Yeah, the, loved the it. The E chord is not in in it at all. I was like, please talk about that second half of the bridge. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that. So it goes minor it goes, five. Uh, yeah, it goes back to the four. Yeah. Four minor, back to the one. Minor yeah, five. Minor five. And then the Ooh. E, which isn't even there, but it's the five of the four. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And brings it back yeah, to the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Oh. How did you. Because it's like you? it's the four to the four going to the. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Or, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, did, so when you're picking out those chords, you like use music theory to like think about like what would make sense? Or was um, it just like playing and trying it out and. Singing? Yeah, no, mm -hmm. I think. At first, like I, I came up with the main chord progression first, because I really I, like I, I started off with the key, yeah. and then that diminished, and then from there I was just like playing around with chords, and I got that mm -hmm. first the the main chord melody first, and then um, the song like I was writing to it and trying to figure out melodies for mm -hmm. it, and it was sort of coming out, and then I like at one point I scrapped it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I came up with that progression where it was like, um, it goes from that, the G flat, mm -hmm. and then it went to that, mm -hmm. straight to that, uh, the minor five, five, and then to the E and to the four. Mm -hmm. So I was going to write a song mm -hmm. with that chord progression instead. Mm -hmm. And then um, what, as I was working on yeah. both songs, yeah. I just like stuck them together. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love so, that. It's like the f minor five to the four, because like the four of that G flat is that B, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then like, so the four of that is the E. Is the e. So, so, so four usually four it's, you hear like five of the five, five, of the five. that goes to yeah, the yeah. one, but you had minor five, then you went yeah, to the four, four, and then four of the yeah. four. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So I don't know. I mean, oh. but it was like, it was a caveat. Like, it was a caveat. Yeah, it wasn't like I was like, I consciously thought, like, yeah, oh, yeah. that's what I'm going to do. It was no, like, that's, that's what you did. You just yeah. say that's what you did. <laughs> it was, it was more, more like I was just playing around with chords and like, yeah. these chords sound great. Uh, like, I'm, yeah. I think I'm going to go in this direction <laughs> instead. And then that wasn't really working. Uh, and so I stuck it in the bridge. And then, it, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just kind of came Paul together. McCartney did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> does no music theory, just <laughs> play what sounded good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I asked that question because we had a question earlier. Yeah. And so Jaden said, like, is starting a key change with the five chord uh, of the desired key to change the only way to do a key change? No, no uh, definitely not. Ways. But you it's a just, common way. <laughs> yeah, it is common. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can just no, jump to the uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah just jump to the new key if you want to. Let's, you know, or, people who uh, who do Broadway do it all the time. Like you yeah. either can can sing that or you can't. Yep. Right? Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. I, I feel like it is more common <laughs> or like. You know, if you have a lot of music theory knowledge, maybe you can like pick out exactly like, oh, okay, I want this to function like this, so I'll use this chord. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of times it is just like like Aaron did, right? Where you just play chords and it's like, well, those two chords sound yeah. good together. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna play them. Yeah. yeah. I was listening to um Islands in the Stream. Mm. Yeah, like the Dolly Parton. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Who was that? Who was that? Oh, it's Barry Gibb of the. No, it was Dolly Parton. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Rogers. Yeah, Kenny Rogers. Yeah, that version. I was gonna say Loggins. I'm like, that's no Loggins. I just wrote it. Like, I just want to see Loggins because Mike is here. Yeah, but it's not like Loggins. But in that song, it's like when they jump from from the the male vocal to the female it's vocal like two different keys yeah yeah and it's not even related keys mm -hmm. and they just go yeah they don't yeah. they don't do a transition no. or anything they just no. go 
Yeah. I think it's a lot of how you go mm -hmm. too. So to, to pull back to something we were mm -hmm. talking about earlier, phrased correctly, you can do you can either make a dramatic jump, yeah, mm -hmm. or you can have a passing chord in between. It's how you phrase that motion that makes it make sense or not. Because mm -hmm. you could definitely change keys dramatically even with a passing chord, but if you do it in the weird a weird place, mm -hmm. it's gonna be jarring to the ear. And if you do it correctly, you could go to any key you want anywhere with no prep. Yeah. 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 But yep. you can but you can figure out how to make it work. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's pleasing to the ear. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or right. like that's also but like making it jarring is also a technique to use. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. Up, yeah. it's up to you to figure yeah. that part yeah. out if that's what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mentioned probably because that's for me like the most impressive. Because like for me, in order to change keys, I have to have some kind of like a reference note or chord or whatever, but those people just like they just, just get go. it. Like how the heck? Yeah, yeah I was watching like what? the last one, like Lion King, I think. Like the you know when it came to Bob Blaisdell, uh -huh. I was like, how? Like <laughs> how the heck do you just go from key to key, jumping around? You know? Yeah. Like, how the heck? So good. I think hey. I think for a lot of singers that I've worked with who mm -hmm. who can who do that, yeah, it's that. It, they don't even register it's a key change it's yeah. just that's how the song that's the, the, that's song. the note <laughs> that's just the note i'm going for yeah. so yeah. yes the key is changing behind you but it's yeah. almost like you're thinking about the note you sang before yeah and then it's the new note and whatever Crazy. that error was yeah. you just hit that Crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I i watched a video breakdown of mm -hmm. a japanese song and mm -hmm. this guy he said like the chord pattern is actually the same throughout the whole song, mm -hmm. but to di differentiate like the verse and chorus, mm -hmm. it's in different keys. Oh, mm -hmm. so that's where they like just jump right from one key to the other. Yeah, and it is in that case, it was like intentionally jarring where they're like, "Whoa, we're in mm -hmm. like a totally different place," and but the singer is just on it; they just mm -hmm. go straight to it. So. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it has to do with the person singing. Yeah. I mean, yeah I mean, if they can pull it off. That's yeah, that's yeah, why, yeah. you know, like, I mean, how many people are trying to make it on Broadway? And how many people are actually like, Make, doing actually stuff? making it on Broadway? You have to be like the point zero 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 one percent you know, in order to be uh, chosen for something. And that's why they're that good. Yeah. So those are some, hey, great job, everybody. Like that lady who came to see us, you on Wednesday. Made it on Broadway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She Lynn. Wow, <laughs> she like legit was like, you know, was, she a, was, was a, Yeah, she was like a, a Broadway person. She, oh, I forget the name of the character, but she was like the nurse, the main nurse in South Pacific. Wow. Oh. She did a few other shows without, she said she did that one for the longest. Yeah. Wow. Cause she was in that show for like six years or something. Uh, I don't even remember. It was a long. South Pacific. It's it's the, the origin story of uh, <laughs> <laughs> people in Hawaii. Right? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Would you say that, Mike? <laughs> I would definitely <laughs> not say that. <laughs> You're canceled. You're canceled. All the Kanakas. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any uh, questions that, that we missed? We can answer some more questions. We're, you know, yep. we're, we're yeah, here yeah. for a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so... Oh, before we uh, while you're doing that, mm -hmm. if anybody wants to uh, wants to send in there, this is this is the part where you guys show us songs that you uh, that you write. So basically, the parameters are just write a song with one chord that's not in the chord family. Don't know what chord families are? You can you can check out our uh, our video on it over at Ukulele Underground or uh, on this very YouTube channel. I'm sure we have it buried somewhere. Uh, chord families. Just look for chord families. It'll basically explain all. All the chords that sound good in a certain key okay so you have to just pick one chord that's outside of that key and make it work with your song um you can do other stuff like write a song about a goldfish or key of e or whatever else was you know was was in that um you can check the um i guess you plus forums right for the um for the guideline or you can check two three weeks ago um yeah. podcast to uh yeah. to check out the um or i guess Kai, you can just put it below, right? Of this uh, post. Usually, I put put it in the the actual post just so it's not yeah. like cluttering up the the uh, YouTube post. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's open there. It's available yeah. for free. Okay, okay, okay. So make sure you, you make sure you check that out. Um, and you know, we'll we'll pick we'll pick one uh, out of all the submissions that we get. We'll pick one. We'll just send something nice, a nice small snack, perhaps Mike's glasses. You don't need part <laughs> with those, or you don't need those. <laughs> <laughs> you know we're one. desperate for things to can't give ukes away you know we don't have ukulele. i wish we had ukuleles here. here you know <laughs> but maybe your hat 
You don't need that, right? Oh, it's not like you wear that every this day. This is sacred. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want those Pat's hats? <laughs> when what? Pat, when Pat Sajak, not Pat Sajak, when Pat Morita was still making hats? No. Do you want those Pat hats? Because I remember... Um, I would have. Who's that Who's that guy that played with us uh, when when we were in middle school? There's like a sax guy. He played like a, a soprano sax. He's a, he's a famous sax player who played with our jazz band. You were there. Uh, Chad Nishimura was that, was cutting heads with him. Played, played soprano. Yeah, it's the first time I saw a curved soprano sax. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. he's anyway, not really that important, but I have something to think about okay. if you do remember. Um, so uh, send it into where, Kai? Uh, yeah, questions at Ukulele Underground. You can questions. That yep. There it is. <laughs> I had to shimmy for it. <laughs> <laughs> questions. Don't forget the S. Questions genie. at ukulele underground.com. And uh, you can send your, your songs there and uh, you can you can post it on um, on the U plus forums. You can send it however you want, but that's the email to send it to. Kahai will compile all the uh, all the videos, all the songs that we get. Uh, we'll put it in the wheel next next week or the week after or whatever, whenever we get to it, and uh, we'll we'll give a nice prize to somebody, okay? Um, with that said, Kahai, let's go out with the questions, buddy. I know we're, you know, we usually we're out of time, but it's nothing else after this, right? It's not like my kid needs to be picked up from school. We can ask <laughs> some more while. questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, Groovy Girl says, yeah. what does it mean after all the strings are tuned, but on some chords it sounds wonky? Mm, it means that your intonation is off. That's that's basically what it means. So it means if all the string, I mean, if, if I'm understanding correctly, if all the strings are in tune when you you know when they're open, but when you play a chord, it sounds wonky. That means um, one or more of your strings is playing uh, uh, off tune. The intonation is is not is not true because on, on that on, on that specific note. string. So yeah. you know sometimes like when as you go up the neck it gets sharper uh, perhaps uh it can be you know it can go lower it can go flatter so it just it just depends how your you know your setup it can be uh it, it can be a um, humidity thing it can be a, a nut and saddle thing it could be a string thing there's many reasons that it could be causing the, the yeah. intonation problems i know you see this all the time because you sell ukuleles yes. and because you're selling economy ukuleles a lot of them have that same problem. So for example, okay. if I were to play A, right? So this is A and pretend that's in tune because I don't I didn't tune my ukulele before then. Somebody said that like, oh, you should, don't be lazy, tune your ukulele. Yeah, once, once you reach 40 years old, <laughs> you know, as old as I am, <laughs> you're just like, yeah, you know what? It's close enough. <laughs> so uh, if this is A, this should be the same note. So usually what I do is I play the uh, play the harmonic to you know in, in place of the open string, and I would play that same note. Notice how that's the same note. It's in tune, but sometimes it can sound like this. Yeah, it's not what's the same like note. what's what's not you know not in 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 tune basically the intonation is off. So what that means it's playing higher as you went up the uh, the the frets. So if you even if you were in tune, you played you play the G that G will still not sound in tune because this A string is off. And that could be you know that could go across all your strings if if any, if it's a uh, if it's a saddle problem if it's a nut problem that's something that could you know that could happen uh, also if it's a string like I said if it's a string problem nut problem saddle problem uh, humidity problem what yeah. else could be causing that Mike old strings yeah, yeah old, old strings. strings would old strings would be my first because yeah. unless you've noticed this was a consistent problem that you've always had with this yeah. ukulele if it's that then it's probably the setup mm-hmm. but if your ukulele used to play in tune mm-hmm. and now it doesn't. I would check to when the last time you changed strings was, because yeah. I think that's yeah, that would probably it, it, be the first it, thing that you do. No. Change it would strings. be, and it's e- the easiest one to fix. Yeah, because mm-hmm. any other issues you have with it are gonna get a little bit more, mm-hmm. you know, in labor intensive to, yeah. to fix. Yes. Yeah. When you uh, when you buy an ukulele, there's that word uh, that buzzword, which is setup. That's part of the setup. So if you're buying your ukulele um, with it set up for you, meaning that they check the intonation, they uh, they already changed their strings and stuff. It's set up, ready to be played. Intonation should be relatively, you know, well, right? Like right. that's kind of uh, that's what you would uh, expect from from a ukulele that's been set up. So whenever you hear that word, 
set up. It's that's what it means. So I know like um, like people like uh, Hawaii Music Supply will offer like uh, free setups and stuff, and um, and I think Mim does it too. Like yeah. you know, sets it up for you before they send it out. That's what you should expect. You should expect it to like out of the box play. You know, play in tune. Intonation should be good. They worked on it. The um the I guess the heights uh, of the strings and mm -hmm. the, um the. Action, the action, like I guess, would be the action. Uh, that should be all good. Should be set up. That's part of that. But that's what it means, you know. If uh, if you tune your ukulele, but it's still not playing in tune. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. one other thing that it might be is that you might be gripping too hard or pressing down too hard. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Because like if your if your frets, especially if your frets are set yeah. high. Yeah, then it's yeah, possible yeah. that you can press down Too on the hard string and make it sharper. And yeah, 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 make, yeah, yeah. like you're almost you bending the string. Yeah, because that yeah. travel, if it's high, that means that string has to travel pretty far to get to uh, to get in contact with your fretboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so, but she said that it's a newish kamaka, so yeah. that probably wouldn't I, be. Uh, but I would, mm. I would still change the strings even if it's yeah, a new yeah. kamaka to you because mm -hmm. uh, they could have set it up. But left the strings on in a store for a while, mm -hmm. and especially if you're getting it sent to you from someplace else, yeah, like just mm -hmm. a change in humidity, yeah, can change yeah, yeah. and make sure that yeah. you're 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 within the humidity range. That yeah, it that's why be. I said that first because uh, yeah. I've I've had that issue where like I mean, a horror story, you know, like I've uh, I've left ukuleles in like in the car, and it's pretty hot here in Hawaii and stuff. And that's when I would get intonation issues with some of my ukuleles because I would just leave them in the car. Now, no longer change. do that. It's yeah. it's like a really really bad thing because it bakes your ukulele inside there, you know. And uh, and I was noticing you know intonation problems because of that. The humidity just like just did a number on it, and I had to get it full on like worked on and reset up to make it go again but it doesn't matter if it's like a name brand kamaka ukulele or if it's like a kala ukulele or a makala ukulele any ukulele can run into some intonation problems yeah, so no it doesn't is, yeah. no is, you know no no no, no, no. even so a ten thousand dollar ukulele yeah don't just assume they're like oh but it's a kamaka it should no yeah. it, it's and every ukulele is yeah you know yeah and susceptible to, yeah. to it yeah yeah it's how you treat it yes if you treat it if you treat it without a lot of care mm-hmm mm -hmm. It will go off. Or just on. that, or you could care for it, but then the strings are bad. Yeah, you know? yeah. Or I you mean, care for it, but like maybe the uh, you know the um, yeah the, the nuts a little too high or whatever. Yeah. Or it's just mm -hmm. not. Or a the little. saddle is not compensated, but then it needs to be. There's like so much stuff that, that you know that be, reminds you know? me yes. is once you said that. Yeah. Something else that can affect this right here at the at the nut mm -hmm. is. If your strings are somehow sticking in the nut, mm. the drag on that yeah. can force it out of tune. Does it let it vibrate? Yeah, yeah. so what you want to do is uh, actually you can just uh, loosen your strings so you can do it and take a pencil mm -hmm. and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, just, right. and and yeah. just basically Rub scratch yeah. into the, the thing. So you, you basically mm -hmm. coat it with the graphite, which is very slick. Yeah. And the string will actually move easier within the nut. Wow. And that could assume, that could fix some of the problems. Yeah, I would say <laughs> answer. That's a that's a that's a MacGyver stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like if you're changing your mm -hmm. strings anyway, you can just put it in while you're changing mm -hmm. your strings. Oh, absolutely. And it should mm -hmm. help regardless. Yeah, so it's just better. Mm -hmm. But then I also wanted to say that there's no such thing as perfect intonation. So no, 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 no. If you think like, oh, I'm like a couple cents off when I play the seventh fret or something, it's like yeah, you're trying to get it as yeah. good as possible. Yeah, yeah. Where when you play like. If you played a bar chord on the seventh fret, mm -hmm. all the notes are like slightly off, but because they're all slightly off in the same way, that they sound it's good like to not, yeah. not noticed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I have to be honest. Like every time I get this, I talk about intonation and I do mine. There is like a part of me inside that I'm like, oh my god, please play it too. <laughs> it can't. It just be a, like on any given day. It could just be like the humidity for that day, and yeah. it can make it like three cents off, and I'd be able to hear it. You know? Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, oh my god, please play it too. <laughs> it's it, oh, one thing. One oh thing, god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One thing to note about intonation yeah. is that. Instruments, I mean, as you know, humans who build instruments, yeah. nobody has figured out how to build a perfectly in tune instrument really mm -hmm. yet. Everything you do is a compromise in one way or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what other I mean? Other than MIDI. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's really the only way. Electronically, you can generate yeah. tones that are perfectly quote unquote in tune. Yeah. Anytime it has to pass through a physical medium. Yeah. Uh, like with strings, you talk about resonance and everything, you think mm -hmm. about that and intonation. 
But uh, one, an old teacher of mine explained in a way that was actually kind of interesting is that if you had a perfect string that would be perfectly in tune and ring out, mm -hmm. right, it would have length but no mass, mm. <laughs> yeah. which is impossible. It, yeah, it doesn't yeah. exist. Yeah. The instant you have any mass, mm -hmm. it's then messy it's, with it already. Then, then <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, yeah, because at that point, mm -hmm. you're acting. It's acting like a bar clamped at two ends mm -hmm. rather than a string. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you know what I mean. That's why you'd have an infinite length because there's nothing clamping it on either end mm -hmm. yeah. and no mass, so it would vibrate freely forever. The instant you do this, this is not, it's a string, but it's actually acting like a, a tube of plastic mm -hmm. that you have clamped on both ends. Mm -hmm. And that's what's preventing it from oh. vibrating perfectly in the way yeah. we're thinking of. That's why you can't have perfect intonation with mm -hmm. any string instrument, but you just, you come as close as you can. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just do what you do, and it takes so long. <laughs> I uh, I set up my own ukuleles, and it takes so long. And like, and sometimes I, I can't help it. I just have to go to the gig with like a you know with it's partially set up. And during the gig, I'm like visually frustrated, <laughs> like oh my ukulele is not performing as it should. But then like lately, ever since like the um the, the tour, I've kind of I've got it down and. I've just not looked as uh, as grumpy on stage <laughs> as I used to. I used to be so grumpy because I'm like, oh, the E is just not as loud as I would like it. Or <laughs> the, the A is playing just slightly flat or whatever it may be, you know? It goes back to us talking about like playing, learning by ear and mm -hmm. really getting your ear training down. Mm -hmm. When you, you get it down and like that's why they say musicians can make any instrument sound good. Mm -hmm. A musician, like if there's an intonation problem mm -hmm. and they know that, they'll play it off to make it in tune uh -huh. yeah, with yeah. the rest of the group or yeah. with themselves. A good one of that is like uh, if you watch me and uh, me and Matt do our do our you know like our, our the Matt's concert like I was playing an ukulele it might have been this one but I think it was playing the A was playing slightly flat and you could you could see like I'm s like bending it a little bit to compensate yeah. for the flatness of that string yeah. and it's like little subtle things and, or I would be purposely avoiding like the higher frets uh -huh. so that it's not so obvious yeah you know? like, it's because we went into an air condition room yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so like even that 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 is a great example because yeah. it was like you had that instrument set up for you right but yeah it was just because we went from like uh not air conditioned yeah to, to air -conditioned. ac room all day a yeah. hundred thousand dollar instrument <laughs> you know what I mean? like, just, yeah. even then see your even newish then. kamaka versus this hundred thousand dollar kanilea ukulele <laughs> speaking of which kanilea mahalo for uh for for making making the ukulele underground world go round <laughs> i've already explained this past friday and uh i mean aside from our lovely lovely uu plus subscribers who keep the light on who keep mm -hmm. us doing this you know we're doing this because of our lovely beautiful angelic saint-like <laughs> patrons and not for patreon but our patrons of ukulele on the ground the people who are signed up for UU plus thank you one million times um you know I, I i always try to count my blessings and you guys are definitely on the top of that list uh thank you for for allowing us to do what we do allowing us to play music allowing us to teach music teach the ukulele to you folks mahalo and, and for for anyone who's ever had a subscription um may it be current or in the past thank you for you know believing in us and pressing those buttons that, that yeah. you know that uh that say that you support us thank you and if if you want to ukuleleunderground.com if you're like oh how? I didn't know that you you know that we could support you in, in that way ukuleleunderground.com and and I and I read the email today I can't quite be making announcements yet I was going to make <laughs> announcements today but uh, <laughs> I guess yeah. I'll wait until next week to make certain announcements but uh, for those of you UU Plus subscribers you should already know what I'm talking about that um, yeah get in on that before you know before we make it uh, public for for everybody and um, yeah if people who you know who've uh, who've signed up for UU plus um, and and have done stuff like the live coaching the private lessons we uh, we see their uh, their improvements and makes us very 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 happy to uh, to be able to help people um, in their journey of the ukulele find what they're looking for and be able to play the songs that they've always wanted to play so uh, with that thank you guys for believing in us and uh, and Kanilea ukulele for Take you know we were um, those people who don't know Kanye Ukulele acquired us a couple years back. Uh, we were just 
some nomads like wandering through the <laughs> deserts, you know, without a with, without map or water, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and here they came with with the uh, with with an, with an ice cold Coca Cola, <laughs> <laughs> and and allowed us to keep doing this. So mahalo to uh, to to Kanile Ukulele. So whenever you guys see Kanile anywhere or whatever, or you know, follow them on Instagram, like their posts, and just thank them for uh, for for making sure Ukulele Underground keeps this light on and keeps running. So thank you to uh, to everyone who makes this thing go. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and why not pick up a Kanile ukulele, right? Kahai, where can they get those? Uh, from shop dot ukulele underground dot com. Pick up a Kanile ukulele uh, that I hand picked. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, which alongside our our ukulele underground overlords, uh, we we hand picked them. At, and we made sure we got some nice choice ones, especially the Aldrin Guerrero models. So if you guys want a Kanile ukulele with master grade koa, that's how you get them. And also, you can get them locally here on Kauai, right? Ah, uh, you could. Right, like, yeah. There is a place. Where, what? <laughs> There's a place. <laughs> I recall. Scotty's music. Not too big. In fact, it's, it's kind too, of across the street like from Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and it is kind of small. It's <laughs> pretty small. Yeah, it's Scotty's cool. music. That's Scotty's where I music. work. Yeah. And where is that? What city is that located on the island of Kauai? It's in the city of Lihue. So if you are coming to visit our mm-hmm. beautiful island here, it's five minutes from the airport. Mm-hmm. Stop on in yeah. and take a look. We have an Aldrin Guerrero model set nice. up just like his. Just like how His I, yes. signature strings, yep. everything like that on our wall. Intonation good? As far as I can tell so far. <laughs> okay. Whew. <laughs> <laughs> Very um, nice. And can they see you there? Yes. I am there uh, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. And between I'm 11 there. And on, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whenever he's, he's there. there. <laughs> and I do not work there. No. <laughs> I'm just there. He just comes to hang out with <laughs> friends, man. Eh? I do. And sometimes people are like, wait, are you the guy? I'm like, yeah, I just, I'm, you know how there's like mall rats where people just like <laughs> hang out at mall but don't buy anything? I'm like, I'm like a music store rat. Like I'm just, I'm just there playing piano. <laughs> They're like, and that's not true. He yeah. buys stuff all the time. Doesn't ask for discounts or anything like that. <laughs> ah. He is he is a patron of our store, ah. which you. we appreciate. Thank you. Thank no, you. it's because uh, <laughs> when we buy stuff from Mike, it's like I'm adding on, I'm slapping on a fee, right? <laughs> But yeah, I just you know like I I, I just realize we do we do have to count our blessings you know like and and I'm glad that I I get to wake up and do this and you know and and see see Mike at work see Aaron and Kahai and be able to just write songs for you folks and be able to like hang out and, and talk with you guys live this is a this is a huge privilege and I thank you folks so much for uh, for it's a believing good job. us yeah. You know, and uh, and I would like to do this for a lot longer. <laughs> so please check out ukulaleontheground.com. Sign up for UU Plus. That's how to keep the uh, keep the light on here uh, at Ukulele on the Ground. Or we could just not. We just shut the whole thing down. Perhaps. Burn. It's burn. Okay. No, no, no. YouTube will still be around, so you all the play along. Yeah, that's so. true. That's true. No, I'm just joking. But for, okay. for, I'm not joking about the part where like you guys should totally sign up for UU Plus, though. Before yeah? we turn off the lights, can we answer one last question? Sure. Okay. Sure. 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 Okay. So Julie said, uh, "I've mm. always wondered how can I work out my own riffs." Uh, <laughs> wow. You, you, you can pick a open. short one. <laughs> How do you work out your own riffs? It really, I, I know we've, you know, I know we've answered this question before, but I'm guessing you listener or new watcher, um, it, it, it really depends. Whatever strikes you first, if you have a chord progression already, um, that makes it so much easier. So if your chord progression is G and C, to come up with you know with with a riff for that, um, you either have to figure out if you're in the key of G or if you're in the key of C because you can be both, right? right? So say you're you know that you're in the key of G. So that means your riff is gonna come from the key of G, meaning you're gonna be playing these notes. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Don't forget the F sharp, very important, that one, okay? Um, now, knowing that those are the notes, and of course it goes down to, those are all the notes in the key of G. So your riff, could come from you know from those uh, from those notes. It can come from outside, but let's just kind of keep things simple here. So if it's G, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right? Aaron's gonna play for me. We have. So 
So those are, notice that all the notes that I played sound really good, you know, against Aaron's G and C. Now you just come up with, uh, with, with some kind of melody line containing those notes. It can be as easy as one note. It can be as hard as all the notes that we just played, okay? So I'll play that again. So let's just say G. So this could be my riff. It's as easy as that. Or add another note, so. So what I'm trying to say here is just, you know, you have a blueprint of what notes you can pick from. Like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're advanced, you can always go outside of that blueprint. But knowing what notes is available to you is a huge help. So if you uh, if you just do basic music theory to learn about keys and about like um, uh, uh, playing in specific key that you like playing in, you could create your own riffs based on those. And then you know like. You just kind of add, uh, you know, on top of that, if you already got so, uh, an, uh, a nice easy riff, you can add techniques, you can do. So that's me adding the, the bends, maybe add a, um, a hammer. Or maybe add a pull off. Or maybe add a hammer pull. Or maybe add a slide. You know, there's all these different um, approaches to it, but those are the notes that are available to you, um, you know, in easy mode uh, to, to create riffs from. Yeah. So uh, you figure out like what key you're in that you're writing a riff for, and then use those notes to, uh, to create a melody. Yeah. That's, I, that's it. Yeah, I actually do it backwards or yeah. like for songwriting and stuff, yeah. because I'll come up with ideas like <laughs> in the shower or something, yeah. and then get out, and I have like the riff in my head. Yeah. yeah. And I sing it, but I don't know what key or notes I'm singing. <laughs> so I have to sing it, and then I take out my ukulele, and as I'm singing yeah. it, I have to play along and then figure out, like, oh, I'm singing in G or something. Because yeah. I, I, like, I don't understand my own voice. But, like, that's a way, too, is, like, you don't need to necessarily start with, mm -hmm. like, chords and stuff. If you have, like, a riff in your head, just, like, uh, we were talking, mm -hmm. or earlier we were talking to Mike. And it's, like, if you have a riff in your head, just get it out, like record it on your phone or something first. And yeah. like, before you forget it. Yeah, before yeah. you forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can always come back to it later, right? Like, yeah. And you can be like, oh, okay, yeah. it was actually yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. It is, I mean, it's, that's uh, that's the next level up, I think. I think it's easy, yes, if you already have chords down and you're writing stuff to it, but that like kind of just like figuring it out, like, kind of uh dry without you know without you just going la, da, 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 da. yeah if you're like a beginner trying to like la, da, 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 da. yeah in fact that's that's how i do it usually but I'll, yeah like, i'll, I'll, I'll have chords just, and then i'll yeah. just like hum something yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. when I, I try to like sometimes when i try to write thinking about scales mm -hmm. i feel like it comes out dry and it sounds like mm -hmm. a scale. i'm playing a scale mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's where i have to like step out of it and be like uh, like hum it or yeah. think about it like as like okay well i'm not really a singer but like if right. i try to sing something <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah so i mean however yeah. you can get inspiration to hit you like yeah. that's that's it if you're inspired by like something that you can't get out of your head if you mm -hmm. already have you know but if we're talking riffs i'm guessing you already have like some kind of chord progression to write a riff to um yeah but that's that's the easiest approach if you've never done it before i would suggest just finding two chords and writing a riff to those two chords yeah mm -hmm. to keep it keep it simple k-i-s-s -S, right Absolutely. Yeah, especially keep it simple riffs. sam like if you're using the term riff, that's yeah. not like a solo. It's no, not no, like it's a, just like a you thing. know, it's just like yeah. a little hook that, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. a melod melodic hook. Yeah, I think that's also another yeah. point of it <laughs> is if you the more riffs you learn is like just the better your library and not necessarily to copy mm -hmm. it one for one, but mm -hmm. you can kind of be like, I want this kind of idea yeah. or mm -hmm. like or that. the feel like yeah. or yeah. whatever. Riff is. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that complicated or long. As a matter of fact, at the beginning, it shouldn't be that yeah. complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Mahalo, Brittany. Yeah, yeah. 
And by the way, that that whole thing is goes back to yet uh, that same point again. Listening. Uh-huh. You listen to mm-hmm. if you listen to enough, and you're doing it for yourself. Like like we were talking about the tuning thing. You mm-hmm. do it enough, and then your your familiarity with the notes will increase. Mm-hmm. That way, the next riff you try and do you'll kind of hear what that relationship between the chord and the notes are, and then you'll be able to find where you're going faster, mm-hmm. you know? And if you hear someone do a riff that you really like, you'll you'll hear like the relationship of the notes that person is using with over the chords they're playing, mm-hmm. and you'll be able to get to there faster than if than if you have no idea how they relate to each other, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and that's, that's it, right? Like, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm saying all that stuff because I thought we were gonna sign off, but we got a nice, good question there. I, I'm glad we got to uh, squeeze that in because mm-hmm. there's some good information. But folks, we do this every every Monday, 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. So please come back, you know, and uh, and listen in. You're gonna be like a be like a fly in the wall, and uh, and just listen into the conversations here at Ukwila the Underground. Or you you be a loud fly if you want. You could you could ask us questions in the live chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know just. Just hang out with us. We're here every Monday, most of the time with Mike. Sometimes not with Mike, but we're still fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like Mike and stuff, but we're cool too. You know, <laughs> come come even when Mike's not here. <laughs> but um, we uh, we we love doing this. Thank you so much for believing in us. Thank you to all once again to all the UU Plus subscribers. We really can't do this without you, and I, I can't stress that enough. We can't do this without you. Thank you. And if you uh, if you want to be a UU Plus subscriber, ukulelaontheground.com and sign up for UU Plus there. Boom, boom. <laughs> Fighting evil by the moonlight. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll be and, announcing yeah. something in a couple of days. Yeah, in a couple of days, we'll, we'll make an announcement for those people who don't want to sign up for UU Plus, but do want to take some uh, some lessons from us. Uh, stick around. We'll, we'll make an announcement. If you're like, oh, you know, I, I like Aldrin's teaching. I like the way that he uh, that he presents things. What is this form thing that he that he's talking about? Maybe you could teach me how to do some form. Maybe you could teach me how to. Phrase correctly, maybe teach me how to listen, you know, <laughs> or to groove and stuff. I can help you out with that. Um, yeah, and you don't even have to be a U Plus subscriber. Better if you do. Well, better if you do. Cheaper if you do. Let's just say. <laughs> we'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Enjoy the rest of your week. We'll see you folks on Friday for a little Friday live jam. Right, Mike? Absolutely. Shoots. <laughs>